We're here to talk about today the continuing story of William Charles Wentworth. His controversial fights, his passion, his vision, his sensitivity and his relationships from 1825 to 1838. Hi, I'm Michael Bischel, historical fiction writer, and now we'll journey on with a summary or a synopsis of the man himself. Now, it's not easy to try and condense into a short video like this, such a man as Wentworth. It's not so much about a man of high ideals. He was no Gandhi, but he was no Hitler either of his time. He was just a passionate Australian who let his emotions at most times get away from him and leading him into paths that he would not normally have consciously chosen to explore. On the 7th of July 1827, Darcy Wentworth died. Now, according to the Sydney Gazette, two days later, and I quote, on a wet dismal day, 40 carriages and gigs and a large number of horsemen assembled at Homebush to follow the coffin to St John's Parramatta, for Darcy Wentworth had enjoyed it to abundance the regard of his fellow men. There the son, he, who had found his father's love to be wonderful, to him passing that a woman and the woman whom Darcy had loved, now big with child, by him, shed tears as a radiant Samuel Marsden recited the words which summed up Darcy's earthly pilgrimage. My heart was hot within me. William Charles Wentworth arranged for the remains of Carolyn Crowley to be interred next to his father with a single gravestone. Now Darcy Wentworth had left his son William Charles a very wealthy man. With this inherited wealth he bought four clues and a state on the bay on the south side of Sydney Harbour where he established a great mansion of grandeur which is still extant today. At the time, the colony was governed by Lieutenant General Darling. I'll talk about him in another video, but in this instance, Wentworth was so adamant about Darling's mismanagement of the colony that he wrote to Lord Bathurst in, Sydney, in London and filed a bill of impeachment, would you believe, against the governor. Now, this was a big step, and you can see what sort of man Wentworth was by this dramatic action. In October 1831, Governor Darling had been recalled to England. Wentworth was so excited that he threw a party at Four Clues where, according to his records, an ox, half a dozen sheep were roasted to celebrate the joyful event. Lots of Cooper's Ale and Wright's Best were consumed at the joyful occasion. Men wore ribbons on their hats to add to the gaiety and rejoicing. A band played over the hills and far away and in the evening there were splendid illuminations in glass and other fancy lamps. A big dick. In 1833, the wages of Colonial Secretary Maclay were to be paid out of the convict funds rather than being reimbursed from London. This was too much for Wentworth, who did not esteem Maclay very highly. At a function in June in the courthouse of France, Francis Greenway's design, with the Benevolent Society, he insulted Maclay by saying that it was a waste to pay him £750 a year. Quarrels broke out and hissing. The ladies retired from the courtroom and Wentworth was quoted as saying, Let them go. Those who carry their senses in their heads will remain. Those who carry their senses in their heels will be off. Not a particularly good quote if you said that today. Wentworth continued on with his fiery passions against those he, who wanted an aristocracy in New South Wales. He would continue his fight up to the end of the 1830s when he was being drawn towards some of the ideals of his arch enemies and became a little disillusioned. He will continue the fight in the years, to he years ahead, but that'll be the series of future videos. I'm Michael Bischel. That brings us to the summary of William Charles Wentworth in this early colonial period. His name will be mentioned in future videos with Governor Darling and the MacArthur's and others. That's it for me. Goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. Next video, we'll be talking about Sarah Cox, the wife of William Charles Wentworth.